Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Anime Dreams. Today, we're delving into an intriguing fanfic concept, what if Naruto were a werewolf? Disclaimer, the content on this channel is intended for entertainment and discussion purposes only. I do not own any of the anime footage featured in my videos. All rights and credits belong to their respective creators and copyright holders. Let's dive in. A young boy lay on his bed, writhing in the throes of a feverish affliction that had overtaken his entire body. His spiky blonde hair was damp with sweat as he turned restlessly, as if plagued by a tormenting dream. This boy was Uzumaki Naruto. One might question why such a child was left alone, with no one to tend to him during his illness. The answer is straightforward, Naruto is an orphan and is regarded as the village pariah. Naruto grew up in Konoha in solitude, receiving scant kindness and affection from its residents. Most viewed him with disdain, while others merely ignored him. He was never told much about his parents, except by the village leader, affectionately known as Gigi, who informed him that they perished on the night of the Kyuubi's attack, the night he was born, nearly eight years ago. After being expelled from the orphanage at age five, Naruto was provided with a dilapidated apartment on the western edge of the village and a modest allowance for necessities by the Sandaime Hokage. Since then, he had lived in isolation, with only occasional visits from the Hokage during his free time. Forced to navigate life alone, Naruto developed a maturity far beyond his years. While other children played carefreely, he faced a harsh reality shaped by the villagers' animosity, which extended to their offspring. As a result, Naruto grew up shunned and solitary, relying solely on himself for companionship. Unbeknownst to Naruto, he was the Jin Churiki of the Kyuubi no Kitsune, the nine-tailed fox demon that had attacked Konoha on the day of his birth. Despite enduring hateful glares, harsh words, ridicule, and occasional beatings, particularly on his birthdays, Naruto retained a childlike innocence. He revealed this genuine self to those he loved shedding the mask of indifference and coldness he wore in the presence of the rest of Konoha. As Naruto tossed and turned in his fevered slumber, another presence within his mind awoke from a deep, enduring sleep due to the sudden illness afflicting his vessel. The Kyuubi no Kitsune found itself bewildered. Its millennia of experience had not prepared it for the fever that gripped its host. Despite its attempts to channel chakra to alleviate the condition, the effort was continually thwarted by an inexplicable force that seemed to shield the boy's body from its influence. No matter how hard the Kyuubi tried, success remained elusive. The Kyuubi, despite its immense power, felt fear for the first time. It understood that if its vessel were to die, it would too, due to the Sinigami seal confining it within the boy. Despite all efforts to ensure its host's survival, this relentless fever was proving fatal, and no amount of regeneration or chakra enhancement could counteract it. Hours passed as the Kyuubi desperately tried to use its energy to remedy the situation. However, all attempts were in vain. In resignation, the Kyuubi withdrew its energy, awaiting the inevitable. What an absurd way to perish, the Kyuubi grumbled. Me, the Kyuubi no Kitsune, the most powerful Baiju, succumbing to fever. I am unsure whether to feel humiliated or disturbed. It sighed again, casting a disinterested glance at the pipes running through the cavern ceiling of its prison, noting the intermittent appearance of a peculiar brownish energy. Dismissing it as irrelevant, the Kyuubi prepared to rest. Just as it was about to drift off, the strange energy pulsed again. The Kyuubi's curiosity was piqued. It focused its limited senses on its vessel and observed that rather than deteriorating, the energy was gradually improving the boy's condition. Intriguing, the Kyuubi mused. It appears my vessel is not dying after all. But what is this phenomenon? It refocused its senses to better understand the effect on Naruto's biology. To its astonishment, it noted that the energy was enhancing the chakra coils and major senses, seemingly revitalizing and transforming the host's cells. Indeed, fascinating. It seems my time here is not yet over. Let us see where this development leads. Surprise me, Vessel, the Kyuubi chuckled as it settled down, no longer fearing imminent death. When Naruto awoke, he was disoriented by the passage of time. He weakly turned his head to check the clock beside his bed, 
only to be shocked to discover he had been asleep for two days. His amazement was interrupted by the rumbling of his stomach, signaling a severe hunger. Despite his weakened state, he managed to rise from his bed with effort, joints creaking and muscles protesting. He made his way to the bathroom, relieved himself, and prepared for a cold shower. To his surprise, the water was pleasantly warm, a rare luxury in his unheated apartment. He luxuriated in the warm water, cleansing himself of the grime accumulated over his extended rest. After showering, Naruto felt refreshed and relaxed. As he approached the sink to brush his teeth, his reflection in the mirror took him by surprise. His formerly emaciated frame had been replaced by an athletic build, a marked improvement over his previous state. He now stood at about 5 feet 1 inch, considerably taller for his age, with well-defined muscles that could make an athlete envious. What had once been a gaunt figure was now a chiseled physique, complete with a well-defined chest and six-pack abs. Though puzzled by the sudden transformation, Naruto was thrilled by his new physique and saw it as a stroke of fortune. He contentedly, though wearily, dried himself off and proceeded to his closet to select an outfit before heading to Ichiraku Ramen for a substantial meal. Given that his birthday had been two days prior, it was only fitting to indulge himself. He opted against his usual orange jumpsuit, which no longer suited his new physique, and chose instead a black shirt and grey baggy pants gifted by the Hokage the previous year, which he had refrained from wearing due to his attachment to orange. After ensuring his appearance was satisfactory in the mirror, he retrieved his trusted frog wallet, affectionately named Gama-chan, placed it securely in his pants pocket, and exited his apartment. Despite his fatigue, Naruto was impressed by his physical transformation. He no longer experienced the weakness and lethargy associated with his previous malnutrition. In fact, he felt capable of running at full speed around the village without exhaustion, though he chose to moderate his pace due to the growing hunger in his stomach. As he made his way to his favorite ramen shop, he partially disregarded the hostile glares from the villagers, though he nearly stumbled when he overheard distant remarks. Look at him, parading down the street as if he owns the place, that demon brat. Naruto scanned his surroundings, puzzled by the source of the voice. His confusion deepened when he began to hear snippets of conversations from individuals who were too far away for him to normally perceive. Damn the Hokage for passing that law. If it weren't for that, the demon brat would have been eliminated long ago. Be quiet. There are Anbu operatives nearby. We don't want to attract unwanted attention. Naruto turned towards the source of the conversation and noticed two merchants speaking in hushed tones. He could distinctly hear their discussion despite the distance. Curious, he followed the sounds to locate the speakers. I wonder if I should get an apple for my sister, a girl at a fruit stand mused while inspecting the selection. 1010, don't forget to deliver the shurikens to the address I gave you, an elderly man instructed a girl with two buns in her hair. Sure, dad, but remember to give me those kunais you promised after this delivery, she replied before hurrying off. As Naruto continued towards Ichiraku Ramen, he marveled at his heightened senses, particularly his improved hearing and sense of smell. The delicious aroma of ramen reached him even though the shop was still three blocks away. Intrigued by these new abilities, he decided to explore them further at a later time, for now, he was eager to enjoy his ramen. At Ichiraku Ramen, Tuchi and his daughter Ayame were astounded as they watched Naruto consume bowl after bowl of ramen with seemingly insatiable appetite. By his fifteenth bowl, they were amazed at his endurance, a stark contrast to his usual limit of ten or fifteen bowls. Their astonishment was interrupted when Naruto requested another bowl, prompting them to quickly prepare it, eager to retain their most loyal customer. Naruto had previously assured them that no other ramen could compare to theirs, so they were confident in his continued patronage. After an hour, Naruto let out a satisfied burp and set down his 23rd bowl of ramen. The previous fatigue had dissipated, replaced by an invigorating energy that would be perfect for his personal training later. He didn't mind the dent in his savings, he was too content to be concerned. That was fantastic, Tuchiyoji san Your ramen is the best. Naruto declared, followed by another loud burp that elicited laughter from Tuchi and Ayame. Of course. What did you expect? I am the best ramen chef in the world. 
Tucci proclaimed with fiery enthusiasm. You've got it, old man. When I become Hokage, I'll make ramen the national dish of Konoha. Believe it. Naruto responded with equal fervor. Ayame sighed as she watched the exchange between her father and Naruto, her surrogate brother. Rolling her eyes, she began cleaning up. After a few more declarations of love for ramen, Naruto bid them farewell. Ayame gave him a brief hug and a kiss on the cheek, causing him to blush furiously as he hurried out of the shop, her tinkling laughter following him. Naruto arrived at his secluded training area deep within the forest surrounding Konoha. Though he could have used the village training grounds, he preferred to keep his training private to avoid public scrutiny. Contrary to popular belief, Naruto was not foolish. He had learned early on that acting naive was an effective strategy to avoid beatings and ridicule from academy teachers. By masking his skills and intelligence with a facade of boisterousness and prankster behavior, he managed to divert attention from his true abilities. His pranks, though annoying to many, had successfully deflected hatred meant for the QB. Upon reaching his preferred training ground, Naruto reflected on his recent physical improvements. Beyond the visible enhancements, his senses had also become more acute. His heightened hearing, sense of smell, and taste had not only intensified his enjoyment of ramen but also enabled him to surpass his previous eating records. Determined to further test his physical limits, Naruto began with laps around the training area. He observed significant gains in both speed and stamina. After completing his usual five laps at top speed without fatigue, he pushed himself further, running through the trees with remarkable agility, leaping from branch to branch and avoiding obstacles with ease. He continued until he felt sufficiently exhausted, an impressive feat in itself. Collapsing onto the grass, he gazed at the clouds, contemplating his body's newfound capabilities. Having tested his speed and stamina, Naruto decided to assess his strength. He rested his muscles briefly before approaching a large tree in the clearing. After taking a few deep breaths, he assumed the standard academy taijutsu stance and unleashed a powerful punch at the trunk. The results were astonishing. His fist struck the tree trunk with such force that it shattered the first few inches. The intensity of his impact was so great that he felt no pain in his knuckles, which was remarkable given that his healing abilities were not exceptionally rapid, and he typically experienced some degree of discomfort after delivering a powerful blow to a tree or training dummy. He continued to strike the tree with increasing force until he reached his maximum capacity. After 30 minutes of relentless effort, the tree finally succumbed and toppled with a resounding crash that reverberated through the clearing. Naruto was astounded by the sheer power of his strikes. He examined his knuckles with an almost comical expression, then glanced at the fallen tree, and back to his knuckles. A satisfied grin spread across his face. He knew he had to share this achievement with Hokage-sama. He sprinted back to the village, leaving a trail of dust and scattered leaves in his wake. In his office, Hiruzen Sarutobi, the third Hokage, was immersed in a sea of paperwork that seemed to multiply despite his relentless efforts. The stack had grown rather than diminished, and he muttered a curse under his breath, resolute not to stop as he knew the papers would only proliferate if left unattended. He sighed as he stamped another document with noticeable frustration. Longing for a brief reprieve, he found his wish unexpectedly granted when the office door burst open with a loud bang. Naruto, his surrogate grandson, entered with a beaming smile that momentarily alleviated the Hokage's exhaustion. Despite the challenges Naruto faced, his presence never failed to lift the Hokage's spirits. However, Hiruzen's smile faltered slightly as he observed the changes in Naruto, he appeared taller, more muscular, and notably absent was his usual orange attire. This deviation triggered a sense of unease within him, but he chose to withhold judgment, anticipating that Naruto would provide an explanation for his visit. With a welcoming smile, he addressed the exuberant boy. What brings you here, Naruto-kun? The Hokage inquired, his tone warm despite the fatigue. Gigi, something incredible happened to me. Naruto exclaimed, brimming with excitement. The Hokage quirked an eyebrow at the declaration. This should be interesting. Really? Well, grab a seat and tell me all about it. The Hokage gestured towards an empty seat in front of his desk which the blonde happily took. 
I had a fever a couple of days ago and I woke up this morning and found my body changed. Blurted blonde. Really now, Naruto-kun? What do you mean changed? Please tell me everything and don't leave anything out. Demanded the Hokage in a soft voice, trying to puzzle out the drastic change in his hyperactive surrogate grandson. Naruto scratched the back of his head, organizing his thoughts. Well, I woke up this morning feeling fatigued from a recent fever. I went to the bathroom to shower, and when I looked in the mirror, I noticed I had grown taller and developed noticeable muscles. I feel incredibly strong, I can hear better from a distance, and my sense of smell and taste have also improved. It's all quite fascinating. Naruto exclaimed with youthful enthusiasm. The Hokaiye's concern grew. Such physical changes could have several explanations, but given Naruto's status as the host of the Kyuubi, it was possible that these changes were the result of the beast's influence, which was a cause for alarm. Other explanations could exist, but a thorough examination by a medic nin was necessary. The Hokage decided to act on his curiosity and address the situation promptly. Naruto-kun, if you're available, let's head to the hospital for a thorough examination to ensure everything is alright. Persistent fever and significant bodily changes could potentially lead to complications, the Hokage suggested. After Naruto agreed, he pressed a button on his desk to notify the secretary of his urgent, unscheduled appointment and then teleported with Naruto to the hospital's entrance. He motioned for Naruto to follow him inside. As they walked, many civilians and shinobi bowed to the Hokage but cast disapproving looks at Naruto, which he chose to ignore. The Hokage frowned at the disrespect but prioritized the more pressing matter at hand. They reached one of the hospital's offices and entered without knocking. The doctor, who was completing paperwork behind his desk, stood up and bowed to the Hokage. Hokage-sama, what a pleasant surprise. How can I assist you today? He noticed Naruto standing behind the Hokage and greeted him with a warm smile. Hello, Naruto-kun. Is it time for your regular checkup? Hi, Kaido Ji san. Hokage Gigi asked me to come with him, so I did, Naruto responded. He had a fondness for this kind doctor, who was always considerate and attentive during his hospital visits. The Hokage addressed the doctor. Good afternoon, Kaido. Naruto has experienced some unusual changes, and I would like you to perform a comprehensive examination to ensure there are no underlying issues. He emphasized the potential seriousness of the situation, hinting at the Kyuubi's involvement without disclosing too much to Naruto. Kaido raised an eyebrow at the subtle implication and nodded. He instructed Naruto to remove his shirt and pants, leaving him in his underwear, and lie down on the examination table. As Kaido observed Naruto's altered physique, he noted the significant improvements. Kaido performed a series of hand seals, channeling green energy and carefully scanned Naruto's body, paying extra attention to his abdomen. After completing the examination, he repeated the process. After 20 minutes, he asked Naruto to dress and then sat behind his desk, making notes and attaching them to a clipboard. So, Kaido, is there anything concerning about Naruto's condition? The Hokage inquired while ruffling Naruto's hair, eliciting a pout from the boy. Hmm. There is nothing wrong with Naruto-kun's health, Hokage-sama. In fact, he is exceptionally healthy, Kaido responded, thoughtfully chewing on the end of his pen. Are there any adverse effects related to the changes? The Hokage asked, subtly emphasizing the term adverse to ensure the right message was conveyed. No, in fact, during the examination, it appears that Naruto has awakened an unknown Keke Genkai, which I have not encountered before, the doctor reported with visible excitement. The Hokage was taken aback. Naruto possesses a Keke Genkai? He knew both of Naruto's parents well, and neither exhibited any bloodline traits that matched Naruto's new abilities, with the possible exception of the mother, related to the beast. This revelation was perplexing. Explain, the Hokage demanded. He needed detailed information to safeguard Naruto anticipating that the council would be particularly interested in such developments. From the diagnostics, it appears that Naruto's body has adapted according to a DNA strand I detected during this examination. This DNA was absent in the last month's checkup. 
It seems the fever was a result of the activation of this bloodline, which used the period of illness to enhance Naruto's overall physical condition, Kaido explained. Are these the only changes associated with the bloodline? The Hokage inquired, his expression serious. Naruto remained silent, listening attentively as he had been taught to do when adults were conversing. No. It changed everything in his biology. It seems that his bloodline also improved his senses making him superior to the Inuzuka clan in regards to their dog-like abilities. Also, the bloodline also gave him a significant boost in muscle mass and bone density, so that explains that strength and speed. Another interesting fact to notice is already impressive regeneration. It is well established that he has an accelerated healing ability, almost akin to a bloodline trait. However, this recent transformation has significantly enhanced his regenerative capabilities. Any wounds he sustains now heal within seconds, and his antibodies are working at full capacity to neutralize any toxins or pathogens that enter his system, the doctor explained, pausing briefly to collect his thoughts before continuing. The heightened activity of these antibodies is responsible for the elevated body temperature, despite readings suggesting that the boy should be deceased. In essence, the boy is virtually invulnerable to all but the most severe injuries, such as fatal wounds or decapitation. Additionally, his new DNA sequence seems to resemble that of a wolf-human hybrid, if such a classification is accurate. One drawback, however, is his metabolism. The extensive physiological changes necessitate a considerably increased food intake, which explains why he nearly depleted Ichiraku's stock earlier, the doctor elaborated, his excitement growing as he discussed the boy's newfound abilities. The Hokage was taken aback by this revelation. Naruto's abilities positioned him as one of the most formidable individuals in Konoha. With proper training, he could potentially become a significant asset to the shinobi forces in the future, or even the most powerful Hokage should he achieve his aspirations. However, the Hokage appeared disconcerted when the doctor mentioned the wolf analogy. A wolf? Are you certain it's a wolf? It isn't? The Hokage inquired, trailing off as he alluded to the QB sealed within the boy. Absolutely a wolf. I should know, my research into various animals from my thesis on advancing medical techniques using animal models confirms it. It is definitively wolf-like, the doctor affirmed with conviction, challenging the Hokage to dispute his findings. Naruto listened attentively, though he did not fully grasp the complex terminology. Nevertheless, he understood that he possessed a remarkable bloodline and that his earlier consumption of food was related to his physiological changes. He was concerned about how much his expenses would increase and realized he might need to either earn more money or learn to hunt a daunting prospect since he was unfamiliar with hunting techniques. He also wanted clarification on the wolf analogy. Kaido Gigi, you mention I'm like a wolf? Naruto asked eagerly, his imagination conjuring images of himself with wolf-like features. Kaido smiled at Naruto's innocent enthusiasm. No, Naruto-kun, you are not literally a wolf. However, your physical attributes, such as your senses, strength, speed, and reflexes, are strikingly similar to those of a wolf. The Hokage interjected. What implications does this have? It implies that Naruto-kun possesses an unprecedented body-based bloodline that mimics wolf characteristics. However, there may be additional aspects to this bloodline that require further examination. Are you both pressed for time? The doctor asked calmly, though his excitement was palpable. The Hokage eager to ensure Naruto's well-being, responded, No, we are available today. Proceed with your tests. I want to ensure Naruto-kun is in optimal condition. Kaido nodded and motioned for Naruto to stand. Naruto, we have identified that you have a unique body-based bloodline. Do you have any questions before we proceed? Naruto shook his head, signaling no questions. Good. I would like you to channel your chakra to the best of your ability without overexerting yourself. You are familiar with chakra control, correct? Yes, Kaido Ji san. Iruka sensei taught us that in the academy a few months ago, Naruto confirmed. Excellent. Please begin, instructed Kaido, pleased that he did not need to provide additional instruction. Naruto performed a ram seal and released his chakra. 
The result astonished both the Hokage and the doctor. Previously, they had noted that Naruto possessed Jounin level chakra reserves, but now his chakra levels approached those of a cage. The power emanating from Naruto created a light blue aura, prompting Kaido to signal him to stop to prevent damage to the building. Remarkable. Last month's assessment placed him at Jounin level chakra, but now he is exhibiting low cage levels and is still developing. This indicates that the physical changes have significantly augmented his chakra reserves. Truly astounding. The doctor exclaimed as he recorded the findings. Naruto, after retracting his chakra, expressed his concern. Ah, uh, Hokage Jiji, Kaido Ji san, something unusual happened while I was channeling my chakra. Really, Naruto kun? I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary, said Kaido, continuing to take notes. Well, when I channeled my chakra, my vision improved. Colors were brighter, and I could see all of you clearly, even a small mark on your right eyebrow. My vision has returned to normal now, Naruto explained, worried about his recent changes. Kaido's eyebrows lifted in surprise. Noting a previously concealed mark behind his eyebrows was extraordinary. It appears your bloodline includes not only body-based traits but also a dujutsu, enhancing your visual perception. Fascinating, Kaido murmured, making additional notes in Naruto's medical file. What's a dujutsu? Naruto asked, intrigued by the term. The Hokage addressed Naruto's query. A dujutsu is an eye-based technique with specific characteristics and effects. Most dujutsus require chakra to activate and yours appears to be one of them, integrated into your bloodline. For instance, the Hayuga clan possesses the Byakugan, which grants nearly complete vision, including through obstacles. Another example is the Uchiha clan Sharingan. Upon hearing this, Naruto leapt from his chair in excitement. Wow! I have a cool dujutsu and a unique bloodline. That's amazing! The two adults observed the energetic child with amusement, heartened by the fact that the boy maintained his smile despite enduring years of hardship due to the villagers' actions. The Hokage decided it was time to address the more pressing matters. Please sit down, Naruto-kun. We need to discuss some important aspects regarding your bloodline. The Hokage's tone effectively dampened Naruto's excitement, prompting him to sit in a chair, though he continued to fidget with anticipation. The Hokage, unable to resist, ruffled the child's hair affectionately. He then turned to Kaido, inquiring, is there anything else we should know about Kaido? Kaido replied thoughtfully, I believe that covers the main points. There may be additional changes and abilities emerging since the transformation is recent. It would be prudent for Naruto-kun to have regular weekly checkups to ensure everything is progressing normally. Additionally, I recommend finding a teacher to help him manage his abilities, particularly his strength as it could pose a risk. Aside from that, Naruto-kun is a healthy eight-year-old. The Hokage nodded in agreement. Thank you for your time, Kaido. Please ensure that today's findings remain confidential. Naruto's bloodline will now be classified as an S-rank secret, known only to the three of us unless Naruto or I choose to disclose it otherwise. Understood? Kaido nodded closing the folder containing Naruto's bloodline results and securing it within his blood-sealed scroll. The Hokage acknowledged this with a nod of approval before placing a reassuring hand on Naruto's shoulder and using Shunshine to exit the room, leaving behind a smiling doctor reflecting on this new development regarding his favorite blonde. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel for more updates. Anime Dreams